welcome to episode 9 of The Green Pirate. This episode, we be talking about energy audits and how to use the kilowatt to help make your house more efficient and more conservative in its energy use. So, Dr. Alder, tell us. Here we have a cell phone charger plugged into the kilowatt meter, and as you can see, it currently uses 0 watts and 0 .00 amps. However, when we plug the cell phone into the charger, you'll see that we now get 0 .03 amps. And once we have an amount of amps, we can determine the watts by multiplying it by the volts, because amps times volts equals watts. So 0 0.03 amps times 112 volts equals 3.36 watts. Here's a look at how much watts a 1500 watt microwave uses. And as you can see, it uses 1500 and about 40 or 50 watts. Yes, so let's talk about the kilowatt. Yes, the kilowatt is a device that you can use to record to record the amount of watts that are being used by a device or to tell the amount of watts that are being used by a device by plugging it in here and then plugging this into the outlet and the amount of voltage that's coming through the amount of amps, the amount of watts, uh, it's all registered here. And you even have an option to check by kilowatt hour. And that is very useful when you have a device that changes how much electricity it uses over time. For example, an air conditioner or a refrigerator. A refrigerator doesn't use a constant amount of electricity. It's in a low power mode for an extended period of time and then when it needs to cool the inside it then uh, it then goes into a high power mode where it uses lots of power. So you would want to keep this plugged in uh, with that setting so that you could see how many kilowatt hours it used over an extended period of time. And then once you have that extended period of time you could take the kilowatt hours and divide it by the number of hours and then you get an average per hour and then what we're planning on doing is taking it from from an hours in a month so that we can look and see how much does this appliance cost us in a month and for regular appliances that use a constant amount uh, you can just use watts so for a light fixture you figure out how much uh, it uses by plugging it in and, and checking the watts and if you have light sockets that you know they don't have plugs you just find out how much electricity that bulb uses and once you do that you multiply it by the number of bulbs you have in the house and how often they're on and that's uh, that's what we'll show you in this spreadsheet Tell us, Dr. Alder, how do we use this spreadsheet and make the spreadsheet? Yes, so the spreadsheet, if you look at it, the, what we have here is we have the appliance and then we have the watts used and we have different power modes. We have on, in use, and off and they mean something kind of different for each device so for example when you look at a Wii uh, off means that it's powered off it's not it's not turned on you're not playing the Nintendo Wii but uh, it's not unplugged either um, and so then a a device like the uh, a laptop the MacBook that's listed in there, it is listed on as uh, being on when it's in sleep mode and then in use when it's in use mode and off when it's off. And as you see on the spreadsheet, some appliances don't use any energy when they're off and some use a surprising amount when they are off. For example, the Motorola Digital Cable Box 
uses one watt less when it's off than when it's on. Here is a look at a Motorola digital cable box and as you see it's using 16 to 15 watts when it's on however when we power it off it is still using almost the same amount of watts. See we've no longer got a signal but yet we're still using 15 watts. So some devices still use almost as much when off. To get the cost, we multiply the national grid rate of 0.13377 by the number of watts used in a month. Here we multiply the number of kilowatt hours per appliance by the amount of CO2 emissions from national grid. The way that you can use this spreadsheet to help you is to calculate uh, the amount of power that each option has. So, you know, there's a listing of different types of bulbs. If you choose compact fluorescent, it shows how much less you use. And if you choose LED, it shows how much further less you use uh, and how much it will cost you in a month. Now, you will note that there are some, that the total seems a bit small, uh, even for a house that conserves a lot of energy. Well, that's because it's not including uh, electric stoves, if you have an electric stove. It's not including the um, electric dryer, if you have an electric dryer. And it's also not including air conditioning because air conditioning is really varied from day to day on how much you're going to use it. So, Dr. Alder, tell us, after we build this spreadsheet, what do we do? The option for some appliances is to turn them off. However, as you see with this appliance, it takes three minutes for it to get up to speed so that you can have data and actually change the channel. One thing that you might want to do if you want to replace one of your existing appliances is bring the kilowatt to the store and ask the store workers if you can find out how much electricity device costs. You know, when you're looking at a refrigerator, an refrigerator, the refrigerator on, on the spreadsheet that we have, as an example, uses a lot of electricity. But there's downsides to getting rid of it. For example, the cost it takes to manufacture a refrigerator and the amount of CO2 that is caused by the creation of it and the delivery of it is, is a very high amount and it's hard to get a, a, an exact amount on how much that is. And another thing you have to concern yourself with is that when that fridge that you had been using that still works is disposed of, the, the uh, CFCs are going to be emitted, the chlorofluorocarbons are going to be emitted when they, when they dispose of the refrigerator because they are in the refrigerator and that causes a hole in the ozone which is, is not something you want to do. So you have to look at the pros and cons of replacing an appliance uh, very carefully. Now you people at home in internet land, we'd be spending some money to make this show more audible. Last episode's sound was just awful. And so Cabin Boy said, we need to buy these lavalier things. And lavalier just sounds so cool that we bought it. But it cost us quite a pretty penny. Fortunately, we stole the pretty penny to buy it. But still, it cost us a pretty penny. In any case, I hope that your viewing experience has been better. And if it has, please share the link, the www.stuff, with friends or on your internet blog, whatever that be. Or is it a blog? Blog. Blog. <laughs>